Okay, well this will be the final video in this uh, Denon series. I've run the deck for uh, 8 or 10 hours. I've run pink noise through it, frequency sweeps. Um, I've got uh, a little bit of time on it now. I want to go through and finalize the speed. Double check our flutter numbers and make a few frequency response tests, some distortion tests, and then I'll do a little demonstration on the biasing and auto-tuning features. We'll do the flutter test here. And it's doing well. And I expect it will get better than this too as things things break in a little bit more. I'll do a speed test. And this was my original main problem with the deck was that it had uh, speed instability. And so now I'll just uh, do the final adjustments on it. I've got that 25 turn precision trim pot in there which is so nice to use. I really like those. And I like to run these 0 0.07 to uh, about 0.12 on the plus side. Okay, I think we got it there. We'll reset it, let it do a 20, maybe 30 second average. there 0 0.083 which is very good for 30 seconds 0 0.076 that's right where I like to run them that makes me very happy with that number and here's the variable speed feature that I'm demonstrating there um, I'm limited to plus or minus 4%, but the deck actually does plus or minus 12%. So I'm just showing that that's operating correctly. Back to the fixed speed. Back to the variable. Okay, well, let's do a frequency response test. I've got that dialed in now. Uh, I did that at the tail end of the first video, but I've had a little bit more time to work with it now, and I've recapped, done a lot of recapping on it. I should say eight or ten hours on, uh, I, I used a lot of the Elna Silmic 2 capacitors on here, and they're up. Uh, thought and more or less recognized to need about a hundred hours of burn-in time before they sound their best and so that will that will be an ongoing process for the the next owner okay and here we are with frequency response on the metal tape this is not having run the auto tune yet This is just straight out of the straight out of the chute. And it's quite good. Up there at twenty kilohertz. It's down, you know, one point one point one dB, one point four dB, twenty one kilohertz. It's down it's still within that three dB envelope.
Okay, now let's run the uh, auto tune. And I'll demonstrate this a little bit better at the end of the tape. I know it's a little bit hard to see. Okay, we'll run the next frequency test again. You can see there's a little bit of difference there on the high end. A little bit flatter curve. It works quite well. There's our playback. It will zero it out just so we can look, and look at This is at minus 20 dB. I just zeroed out here so we can actually look at the, uh, the plus or minus numbers. And there's uh, 18.5, 20 kilohertz. I dialed it in there a little bit better, 21. About the same. Didn't really change it too much. Flattened it a little bit, but in the end it's it's pretty uniform and it should be because that's the tape that I use to bias it. So the spec on it on this deck is 20 to 20. Um, this one's going out to 21. Do a third order distortion test here. I'm just monitoring off the recording, off the record head. And what they ask for in the service manual on this is minus 3% um, at m more or less maximum recording level. There's not a lot of direction or details on what they want. It's just a number. And so I'm just dialing this in and I'm testing it on Dolby S and then running up the uh, running up the inputs until I'm hitting that 3% number. And that ends up being right about 4, about plus 4 dB. And the way I interpret the manual, I think this is, I think this is correct. Okay, so there's that. Now, of course, this is on the metal tape. Metal tape will be a little bit higher distortion than a, a Type 1 or Type 2. Try it on our traditional SA TDK tape. Back here at zero dB. And we'll run the frequency on that. I'm going to uh, stop this at a thousand hertz because just to speed the test up a little bit. It won't change on the low end. I'm just interested in the high end here. And so you can see it at 20 kilohertz, I'm still within that 3 dB envelope. And there is extended frequency response. And that is not auto-tuned. That was just straight. Now we're running the auto-tune, 
and then we'll run the frequency response again and you'll see that it uh, changes it a little bit there it does electronically what it knows it's supposed to do Now you can see there's a little bit of difference on that left channel. It's not quite getting it up to where it was before the auto-tune was run. And so this is why I like to use the bias trim. Another reason why I like to use the bias trim on it. To just dial this in a little bit. Even, even when it's all electronic and all the bells and whistles sometimes you just have to tweak it a little bit and so what I'm doing here is I'm just putting it right about the first mark to the left just to get that left channel up a little a little higher and then we'll run it again and of course this is done I, I'm doing it with a measuring instrument but when you're making a tape you do it by ear and what sounds right and it's very easy to do um, okay right channel and the left channel and there it is just one one little tick mark to the left and it brings it up that was actually probably a little bit too much but it makes the point. Here's just running straight off the tape. Very similar. This one's trustworthy on uh, monitoring off the head. Some of them aren't. So in reality I would probably dial that maybe half a tick mark or maybe three-quarter tick mark I wouldn't maybe go the whole direction the, or the whole the whole number all right so that's that's well within the and you would expect on uh, the chrome tape now we'd be looking at uh, 19 kilohertz not 20 about a thousand kilohertz less or a thousand Hertz less frequency response on a chrome tape. So that looks good. What I'd like to do now is demonstrate the autotune function on it along with the bias trim and how they work and why I really like why I really like them. I've got the deck hooked up to uh, my Nakamichi T100 and I'm generating pink noise from it and I'm going to record the pink noise to a tape autotuning it and then using the bias trim uh, to demonstrate how this works and I'm trying to get a high quality audio recording I'm not sure how well YouTube's algorithm will compress it if it's even audible but I'm trying and I'm using pink noise it's a good way to do it but I'm trying not to get dinged again for copyright violations so that's why I'm doing it this way so I've got my pink noise generator and that's what this will sound like and I know that this will be pretty irritating to listen to but um, it's it's the way I kind of need to do it here so okay that's what we'll be listening to so I'll put in first here a uh, a D60 TDK Oh no, let's see, will that work? Yeah, that'll work. And auto two function is auto tune function is right here. And you just 
do the record mute and then let it tune and the green lights flashing you should be able to see it yeah you can see it and it's nice because it only takes a few seconds and these are designed to use that auto-tune function on every tape because there are only bias and level settings on this for um, the metal tape and then the electronics process the rest of it and they rely on this auto-tune and the bias trim to dial in and really get the the best result out of the tapes. So this is designed to work this way and it works extremely well. Alright so now I'm going to record and monitor the pink noise and I'll turn this up and then I'll trim the bias. I'll go back and forth and trim the bias to uh, dial in to dial it in. So let's see how this will work. I hope it'll be okay. And it's recording now and it's on the auto trim. And here's the tape, and here's the source. That's my ears. That's a little bright. So I'm going to turn the bias trim to the right to pull the bias it. It's just making trying to stay out of the camera. Right, let me just show it this way. I'll just turn it to the extreme both directions. Okay, there's back to zero. And there's the source. Okay. Source. Okay, now I'm going to be quiet and uh, just do this. Set that I'm listening to. That sounds about right. And what I'm listening for is the high end of this pink noise. I'm just looking to balance it out. Okay, so that's that's how it works and that should be done uh, pretty much every recording on every tape even tapes from the same lot sometimes will vary a little bit so it's a nice feature and um, even though a tape might be biased perfectly you know sometimes it sounds a little better with a little over a little under bias and so I like this uh, when you don't have complete manual controls or fully manual controls this is really a good option all right what I have here this is a bulk TDK apparently chrome tape from NAC the probably the last batch they ever had and they're not really good tapes they're very hard to bias um, they don't sound terrible but they're just a difficult tape to deal with I think this deck does a pretty good job on these. Actually does an excellent job. Alright, so we'll run the auto-tune. Only takes a second. I think it maybe took a little bit longer on that one, but that's understandable. It's a hard tape to bias. Okay, so um, we're on type 2. We're going to start the recording, bring up the volume, 
on the pink noise. Got to get myself set up here so I can hear it. A little bit too much. Right about, right about there. Oh, I made a mistake. Um, one thing that uh, we need to be aware of is if the bias is trimmed here, it will take that into account when it does the auto-tune. So you have to zero the bias back before you do the auto-tune. Okay, there, start the auto-tune. All right, start the recording. Let's monitor the tape, bring the volume up. And let's listen to the difference. Up to my ears, it's a lot brighter. So again, I'm going to over bias. watching the levels on the uh, It's obviously easier, I think, with music than it is with pink noise, but uh, I just wanted to demonstrate how that works, and it does work uh, extremely well. Um, maybe the other thing I'll do is, let me just try the doing it with the Dolby S. I want to demonstrate also how nice Dolby S is, if possible. All right. I keep turning myself down here. Alright, so we're going to start the recording. I'm going to go over here to go to test. And it's very useful and I really hope this turned out okay because I don't know what kind of frequency response all my gear here is capable of recording to the laptop but we'll see and what I learned was that my laptop sound card did a better job uh, reproducing the signal than my headset did and so that's a good thing to know um, and here are just a few images of the uh, the recap and some of the work that was done on the interior the deck will be available for sale on eBay and reverb and I'll put a link in the description and I hope you enjoyed the series. I enjoyed making it. It's uh, a modern deck with modern features and plays back beautifully of course but I also like to make sure that the uh, recording is working correctly. So thank you for joining me. Uh, enjoy the slideshow.